Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's great to have all of you here as we begin our new church year, as we start the new church year with this, the first Sunday in Advent. As you can see, the colors are changed, the tree is up, the, the Advent calendar, the wreath, and so we're beginning that preparatory time, preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus and going through all of that again as we lead up to the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on Christmas Eve. So you'll also notice in your bulletin, there's the half sheet again, if you didn't take one home last week, of all of our service times through the through the end of the year, through December 31st and into the 1st. So that has all the scheduled times on there. Also, don't forget this Wednesday is our first midweek Advent service. That'll be at 6.30 on Wednesday. At 5.30 on Wednesday, they're also having a supper. So come be a part of that if you'd like to have supper um, and fellowship time at 5.30, and then we'll have service at 6.30. So with that, we follow our order of service for this, the first Sunday in Advent. It's printed for us in the bulletin. It's also up on the overhead. We begin with our opening hymn. O Lord, how shall I meet you?
We stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Lord, how shall I meet you? We have all become like one who is unclean. Restore us, O God. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire. Around him, a mighty tempest. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, the true light who comes into the world to enlighten everyone, bless us as we light the candles of this wreath in preparation for your coming. And so enkindle our hearts with the fire of your love that we may receive you with joy and gladness and evermore remain steadfast in the faith. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, as we light this candle, we open our hearts to prepare a place for you. Fill us with your hope that we may share it with the world. O merciful and faithful God, you call the whole world into the fellowship of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ whom you sent to take away our sins. Therefore, we confess our sin and lay it all before you by faith in our Savior, who suffered, died, and rose for us. Receive us according to your merciful promise. Grant us your forgiveness and cleanse our hearts that we may enter into your gracious presence with joy as your redeemed children. As you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson for this, the first Sunday in Advent, comes from Isaiah chapter 64. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil. You make, your, you make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by ear. No eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hands of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. 
Behold, please look, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson comes from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you, would, you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. We stand and speak our Alleluia and verse together. Alleluia, Alleluia. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 11th chapter. When they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sought. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We join in singing Savior of the Nations Come, verses 1 through 4.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our meditation today comes from our Old Testament reading, but I want to add some verses earlier in chapter 63. We read, You, O Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer from of old is your name. O Lord, why do you make us wander from your ways and harden our heart, so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adver- adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you, come da- you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by ear, no eye has seen a God besides you, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry, and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. This is our text, dear friends in Christ. It's Advent season, the beginning of our new church year. And the Advent season emphasizes the threefold arrival of Christ Jesus, who comes as our newborn Savior, who will come as Judgment Day Savior for all of us, and who comes daily for us as a means of grace Savior for each and every one of us. This Advent arrival or this Advent visitation has similarities to a visitation that oftentimes we experience in our lives. Examples would be like job interviews or a major inspection at work, visits to the principal's office or that first date or being called to account as a child even. Can you remember your confidence or your lack of confidence during maybe one of those times? when there was going to be a visitation. Our confidence at one of those times of visitation in life depends on many different variables that's taking place in our life at that time. But regarding the most important arrival or the most important visitation of all, Scripture teaches us that we can be confident in the coming of Christ Jesus our Lord. Fundamental to all the variables affecting our visitation confidence are three questions that we need to ask them. Question one, who is being visited? Question two, who is doing the visiting? And question three, what is the nature of the visitation relationship and its purpose? So question one, who is being visited? Throughout Isaiah's lifetime, it seemed that God wasn't interested in being there for his people in the times of trouble. It just didn't seem like he was there at all. Our text says he had hidden his face. They even blamed God for all of their troubles. Verse 17, the first couple of new verses I read, it says, O Lord, why do you make us wander from your ways and harden our heart so that we fear you not? They wanted to blame God for all of their troubles. The reality was that God had visited them and it wasn't pleasant whatsoever. God visited them with judgment for their sins and the Assyrians conquered the northern ten tribes. And Isaiah prophesied that God would visit them again in judgment against their sin. One has to wonder if this is the best way to build confidence in God's visitations. No wonder the people prayed for a different type of visitation than what they knew was coming. They wanted a visitation not in judgment, but that God would act on their behalf. However, the people of God couldn't deny the dreadful state of their sin and the sin they were in. They continued to sin and wasted away because of their sin. Gives us a very clear picture of who was being visited, sinful human beings. Who's being visited? Well, 
How do we compare then? How do we compare to those Old Testament people? It's hard for us at times to understand why God hides his face from us, isn't it? Cancer, death, loss of job, etc. We can easily ask if God is really there or not or if God even cares about us. You might have experienced his absence rather than his presence even for yourself at some point in time. It would be super exciting, wouldn't it, to experience firsthand a visitation from God. Wouldn't that be really exciting? Or would it? We certainly wouldn't be in a dreadful state of sin as the Old Testament people were, would we, right? During this Advent season, how confident can we be about any sort of arrival or visitation of God to us? How confident can we be? Who is this God that's doing the visiting anyways? Which leads us to that second question. Who is doing the visiting? We must acknowledge the horrible, sinful state that we are in each and every day of our lives and the one who is offended by our sins. We confess that we are oftentimes in, in, our, in our worship services that we're poor, miserable sinners, right? And we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We've done all of those sins, During this Advent season, we stand before the one we have rebelled against, guilty as charged, and we can stand there no other way. The visitation of judgment by God on the Old Testament people applies to all people who are in that state of sin. This is God. God who is the judge, the avenger, and the fearful visitor. However, that's not the whole story for us we find out in our text that our help is in two other names of the Lord. As our text said, it's in the two names of Father and Redeemer. We learn that good news of salvation and his loving purpose in his visitation through these names. Who's doing that visitation? Our Father and our Redeemer. And this leads us to our third question then. What is the nature of the visiting visitation relationship and its purpose? In the middle of all the troubles, the Old Testament people of God, they held fast in the confidence that they had in God and in his saving name. Verse 16, you, O Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, from of old is your name. Isaiah used God's name Redeemer many times to teach confidence to the Old Testament people in his promise of redemption. Isaiah also used that name Father and appeals to that relationship as the basis then for that confidence in God's deliverance of his people. Confident in his name then as Father and Redeemer, we don't lose heart because of it, but respect him for it and we receive his visitations. He makes his love personally known and clear to each and every one of us in his word and in the sacraments. We can have absolute confidence in that good news of Jesus Christ, that he forgives all of our sins because of Christ's death and resurrection. We can be absolutely assured of that forgiveness through the faithful practice of using the means in grace, both baptism and the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is we're privileged again today to partake in, in that very body and blood of Jesus in, with, and under the bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins. We have every reason to be confident in the coming of Christ through the forgiveness of sins. God teaches us to be confident in the coming of Christ because Jesus is God himself, our Redeemer, in the flesh who comes to save. We are confident because God has already fulfilled his promise then through the coming of of Jesus some 2,000 years ago as a newborn child, our newborn Savior. He will come again one day as our Judgment Day Savior. And he daily comes to us each and every day through his means of grace. This is exactly how and why our Advent Lord makes his visitation. We have absolute confidence in his visitation because he is our Father and he is our Redeemer. He shows himself as our Savior who acts for those who wait for him in order to come to the help of his own people. In fact, 
our confidence can be as absolute as the yet unformed clay in the hands of a potter, the unformed clay that we are in the hands of the master potter. We too can confess we are all the work of your hand, O Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. We join in singing verses 5 through 8 of Savior of the Nations Come. We pray. Lord, you have given us the stars as markers of days and season, and we thank you for bringing us to the beginning of a new church year. Keep us faithful as we move through its observance and celebrations. May we gather often to hear the proclamation of your Son and receive the gifts you so freely bestow upon us, Lord, in your mercy. We do not know the time the Son of Man will come. That knowledge belongs only to you, O Lord. Keep us wakeful and watchful and ever ready for his arrival, so that we, along with all your faithful people, may be gathered from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all nations, as we await the full coming of your promised kingdom, be with all who make, administer, and judge our laws. May they use the authority you have given them wisely and according to your good will. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you are our Father. Hide not your face from us. Look with kindness upon your servants, especially remember today Sue Benipos as she continues healing and dealing with her health concerns and all who cry out to you in their time of need. According to your will, give healing to the sick, comfort to those who mourn, and per perseverance to those who suffer for the sake of your name. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, even as we await your coming in glory, you come to us in the here and now, in the bread and wine, in, with, and under the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May all who come to your supper today receive the sacrament worthily, so that with sins forgiven and faith strengthened, your people lack no gift as they await the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We remember with thankfulness all the faithful have gone before us and are now with you. 
Preserve and sustain us until the end, so that we will all be presented guiltless before you in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, to you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. In the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which was shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the supper of our Lord. Please be seated.
We stand. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in true faith until life everlasting. His peace be with you, we pray. The Lord be with you. You, O Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. We bless you, Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are the potter. We are the work of your hands. For all, your all-embracing love, we thank you, O Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn. Please be seated. Again, good morning to all of you. It's great to have you here this morning as we kick off our new church here this first Sunday in Advent, remembering that we are making our plans and preparations to celebrate the birth of Jesus, but also we remember and make our plans for that second coming of Jesus when he will come in all of his glory to take those who believe in him home to be with him in heaven forever. Don't forget, um, Wednesday is our first midweek Advent service at 6.30. They're off having a meal before that at 5.30. And the half blue sheet that's in your um, bulletin there for all the service times now through the end of the year. As you go about your walk with the Lord this week, remember that your Lord has come. He's answered all the questions for you. He's done everything for you. And as we prepare our hearts and our homes to celebrate his birth, we remember the great sacrifice he made for each and every one of us to die on the cross for our sins so that we could have life and salvation forever with him in heaven. Have a great rest of the week with the Lord. I'll see you in the back.